Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays for part 2 of my LTN tutorial. In the first video I built up this small train system to demonstrate using LTN to transport resources from source stations to drop off stations. Now I'm going to make some changes to increase the flexibility of the stations and make them each do more things. Let's start off with something reasonably straightforward. Stations that request multiple resources. As you can see from this station, the inserters are set up in threes, unloading four different resource types. This is very simple. If a train with iron plates arrives in the station, the iron plates will be unloaded into the right chests. If a copper train arrives, it will unload into the copper chests, and the same with coal and stone. This method is nice and simple because each resource has its own separate storage place and will only ever be unloaded into the correct place. To finish off the setup, I need to apply the correct circuit network signals to the station. As before, the station is on network 1, it will only request one train at a time, and it will request when the station sees a signal of minus 40 stacks. At the moment though, we haven't set any requests. As before, I would like to always have at least one train of the resource in the station, so I'll set my requests to minus 80 stacks worth, however this time I set a separate request for each resource I want delivering. Minus 8,000 iron plates, minus 8,000 copper plates, but only minus 4,000 stone and coal because their stack size is smaller. Remember, it's 40 times the wagons, times stack size, and then times 2 so that the train will fill up to two train loads. Now the combinator is fully configured, I can link it to the station again. It will take a little while, but eventually eight trains will visit, dropping off their supplies, and the station will be satisfied. When creating a multiple resource drop station like this, remember that a train wagon is almost as big as a steel chest, 40 stacks to 48 stacks, so choose your numbers carefully. If you request more than one train per chest, you won't be able to unload the train, so the train will get stuck in the station until the resource gets used up enough for the train to finish unloading. This is why I normally use at least two chests per resource. The trains will also unload a bit more slowly than you're used to, because there are only three inserters unloading the train instead of the normal six or twelve. If your train is longer than a single wagon, don't forget that each resource needs to be unloaded from all of the wagons. Now the station has everything it needs, I can start unloading all of these chests and using the resources in my factory. The next station is a little bit different. This one unloads a pair of solids, copper and iron, plus a pair of liquids, oil and water. Now, as we all know from physics, oil and water mustn't mix, so we need to be a bit cleverer. The iron and copper stations are set up exactly as before, the filter inserters will make sure that the solids go into the correct chests, and the red cable tells the station how much of those resources we have. On the other side, the red cables connect the tanks to the station's light, again telling it how much of the resource we have. However, we also have a green cable connected to the pumps. If you look closely, you'll see that the other end of the green cable goes to the station itself, not to the light. This is because we want to know what cargo is on the train. So, open the station and make sure that Read Train Contents is ticked. This will output information on the train's cargo onto the green cable, allowing us to configure the pumps to only activate if the train is carrying the correct cargo for those tanks. That is, if the water is greater than zero, or for the other one, if oil is greater than zero. We could do the same thing for the inserters and configure them to only activate if the train reports that it's carrying the correct resource. However, since we have filter inserters, it's much simpler just to set up the filters. As before, we now need to set up the combinator. Iron and copper are simple. We know what we're doing there. It's minus 8,000 each. The fluids are a bit different because so far we've been using stack request thresholds which don't work for fluids. Fortunately, in LTN, stack thresholds override non-stack thresholds for solids, so we can configure the station for both. Set the threshold to a full fluid wagon, 25,000, and then use the normal rule for setting up the resource request, negative double train load, so in this case it would be 50,000. This will keep the total amount of liquid here between one and two train loads, so I've put in three tanks to allow for some headroom. If you set this to minus 25,000, a train won't come out until the tanks in the station are completely empty, but remember it's much harder to get the last drop of fluid out of a tank than it is to get the last iron plate out of a chest. So, now that the requests are set, I can link the combinator to the station's input light, as before, and we'll see two trains of each resource arrive. Once again, this is a slow process, but as long as your demands on these stations aren't too high, the system will be able to keep itself topped up. If your demands are high, you should probably have a separate station for each resource anyway. The 
These stations are, of course, live and monitored by the LTN system. If I grab a load of iron out of these chests, another train will turn up to replace it, as you can see. Depending on what mods you're using, you may or may not have warehouses available to you. If you do, this can fix one of the big weak points in this sort of system. As you've seen from the stations I've shown you, if you're trying to unload a train with two or three inserters, it takes a long time. If you can put in a warehouse or a long chest, you can remove the filters from the inserters and have them all unload into the same place, then use the filters or inserters on the other side to split the different resources off. This is something I wish I'd thought of much earlier in my space exploration run. If you do try this, be very careful with the quantities of resources you request. Make sure you design your station to support the maximum quantity of each resource at the same time. In space exploration, warehouses hold 512 stacks, making them slightly more than 12 times the size of a wagon, so you could safely unload 6 different resources using my normal numbers, but you will also need to think about fitting enough inserters around the warehouse to unload it. So, that's multiple resource unloading stations covered, I think. We've got multiple solids, multiple liquids and a mix of the two. Next, let's have a think about a station that lets you both unload a liquid and load a solid. This is useful for mining operations where a fluid is required, such as mining uranium. You could set up two separate stations, but that sounds far too easy. Why not make things a bit harder for ourselves? This station setup is less forgiving than the basic ones. If the requests are set wrongly, you can end up with trains turning up to the station expecting to pick up sulfuric acid, and then just sitting there forever. You must also make sure that you never send a train to these stations to dump excess acid, even if there's plenty of room for it. <laughs> Trust me on this. Despite my warnings, the station is actually fairly simple to set up. The solid loading is hooked up as normal, link your chest to the combinator with the red cables and the fluid drop off as well, link the tanks to the combinator with red cables as well. Because there's only one fluid being handled here, we don't need to link the pump up to anything, however you can if you want to. Now to look at the combinator. The signals here are basically all of the ones for both a pickup and a drop off station. The 25,000 request threshold tells the station to only request if there's less than minus 25,000 of anything on the network, and the 40 stack provide threshold tells the station to only provide if there's more than 40 stacks of a solid resource available. So, as long as you set the provide and request defaults as I showed you in the first video, you should be fine. To provide some extra reassurance, this system will always show a negative amount of acid in the station, even when a train has just visited. I do still find these stations scary to set up, but if you're careful you should be fine. Let's turn this one on and see what happens. As before, I'll link up the red wire from the combinator to the station's input light. We should get two trains bringing sulfuric acid in, and then I'll start loading the uranium ore and the station will be ready to provide. The next thing to talk about is multiple provider stations. With the multiple liquid station, we could look at the train's contents to, to decide whether to unload or not. However, if an empty train turns up, we can't, tell, we can't check what it wants in the same way, so we need to use LTN's output. This is the yellow combinator box on the station. As for the fluids, we link this up with the green wire and connect it to the inserters. Now, this is a provider station, so let's set it up like one. The provide threshold is set to 40 stacks as normal, so let's connect the combinator to the input light. A train turns up because there's another station on the network that's requesting green circuits. However, none of the inserters will pass anything across because they haven't been told when to. If we look at the signals shown on the pylons, we can see the resources on the station plus the LTN control signals on the red circuit and the information from the station on the green one. This tells us that the train is here to collect 8000 green circuits. I can use this information to activate the correct inserters by configuring them all to enable when their resource is greater than zero, like this. Notice that whilst this works, the inserters are loading the green circuits, there is no feedback. The number on the green signal circuit remains at 8000. This means that the inserters will keep working until the train is completely full and leaves. Because I've used stack inserters, they haven't been able to completely empty their hands into the train, so they're still holding some circuits which will get dumped into the next train to arrive. This would be okay for a normal single resource station, as the next train to arrive would also want green circuits. However, in this case, it might want coal or iron instead. To fix this, we need to tell the system to leave a bit of extra space in the wagon for the inserters to empty into by setting a locked slot signal. 
This signal tells LTN to not account for one of the slots in each wagon when calculating how much the train should pick up. So, when the next train arrives, it will be expecting to pick up 39 stacks of circuits, that's 7,800, instead of 40 stacks or 8,000. Finally, we need to make sure that the inserters stop when they're supposed to, and for this we need to add some negative feedback. To do this, we place an arithmetic combinator and wire the station itself to the combinator's input. Make sure the station is set to read train contents. Then set the combinator to multiply anything by minus one and then output anything. Connect the signal to the green circuit network and this will now just subtract the train's current content from its LTN request, automatically turning the inserters off when the train is nearly full. Now we'll empty the requester station to get another train to turn up. Notice how the train fills up with green circuits as normal, but this time we can see the requested number on the green circuit network dropping as the train fills up. When it hits zero, the inserters stop, however they will still dump the remaining circuits from their hands into the final slot, but that's okay, that's why it's there. Now the train can head over to the unloading station, and if a train arrives wanting a different resource, it won't be polluted with any leftover circuits. So, now we've covered stations that request multiple resources, stations that provide multiple resources, and stations that both request and provide. These multi-purpose stations can be great if you're short of space for whatever reason, but the big downside of them, apart from the complexity of setting them up, is that loading and unloading tends to be rather slow because you have fewer inserters running per resource. Because of this, I have to admit that I don't use most of these setups very often, but they can be quite nice if you're working with relatively low throughput and confined spaces, which is why I've used the multiple resource unloader stations a lot in my space exploration run. I still haven't used a multiple resource loader station anywhere though, because I suspect that would cause more bottlenecks. Finally, as one more example of how crazy things can get, I thought I'd try to pack unloading stations in as close as possible. This arrangement here requires mini loaders, which is another mod, but this allows me to unload four different items for every six squares of width, which I think is very impressive. It uses four filtered loaders on each train to unload onto a belt, which then goes into a chest and from there into a second chest. This allows the station to store the normal two wagons worth of each resource and then unload it onto a bus, as you can see. The chests are all linked with red cables to their station and its combinator, so they work in exactly the same way as in the first example I showed you. However, I've just condensed everything down as far as I reasonably can. I hope this gives you some inspiration. You could, of course, do this exact same design, potentially with up to four different resources uh, per side, so eight, eight per station, if you, you with inserters, but it would be very, very slow, so to be honest, I don't recommend that. If you do find the multi-purpose stations useful, let me know where and why in the comments. I'd be very interested to see what other people get up to with LTN. If you've got any questions, either ask them in the comments, or come along to my stream most Wednesday nights at 7.30 UK time. I also stream heavily modded Minecraft with some friends on Mondays, and release catch-up videos at the weekends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.